Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I have worms. So, I'm sure you guys are looking at the title and you're like, what do you mean you have worms in your fish tank? And basically, I just mean that there are worms in my fish tank. Yay. It's disgusting, it's upsetting, it's depressing, but we are gonna kill them. So for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to kill worms in your aquatic tank. Detritus worms, planaria worms, whatever kind of worms you have, it should work for them. I've, obviously, I don't know every type of aquatic worm there is, but for the most part, in all of my research that I've done over the past four days, I've discovered that this should be a foolproof method to doing that. However, we do have some disclaimers, some things to go over, and a few details I wanna lay out for you guys before we get started. So long story short on how these worms got in here, what is going on, basically everything that can go wrong with this tank in the past three weeks that I've been cycling it has gone wrong. I've had a hair algae outbreak, a pest snail outbreak, and now I have a worm outbreak. I'm hanging in there, it's actually been miserable, but I am doing okay and we are going to get this tank cycled and clean if it is the last thing that I do. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video or find it helpful on killing worms in your tank, feel free to subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell. Okay, so long story short as to where these worms came from, um, I believe they came in off the plants. That's my best guess because I haven't put anything else in here foreign or anything like that and the plants are the only thing that I know carried the snails in here. So I'm assuming that the worms or their eggs or something obviously probably came in off the plants as well. Honestly, how they got in there is irrelevant. At this point, it's just a matter of how we're gonna kill them, how we're gonna deal with them, and how we're gonna move forward. So as far as which types of worms are in here, it's either gonna be planaria or detritus worms. I've been told that I have both possibly, but it's really hard to know. Even though planaria are usually shorter, fatter, and have a triangular head, I'm pretty sure I have detritus worms for sure. They're just these white little worms that squiggle. I will show you guys what those look like. Here they are. The devil's worms. Ruining my life, ruining my tank. <laughs> there are hundreds of these worms. There's the small ones, there's the long ones. They are everywhere, they're on everything, and I intend on killing them. And while detritus worms are harmless, planaria worms are not harmless. They're actually carnivores. They can cling on to the side of your fish and cause different types of infections. If they bite your fish, it's really, really bad. Also, they eat all shrimp and snail eggs that they find. So if I were trying to breed shrimp in here or keep shrimp in here, they can actually harm the shrimp population. So that's another reason I want to get these things out of here. I don't know if I have planaria 100%, but... Honestly, I don't really care if I do or not. I'm just gonna wipe out all of the worms that are in here at all. And I'm pretty sure that today's method will work. So that's what we're gonna show you guys today. So I have been doing nonstop research since the moment that I found these worms in here because obviously I wanna nuke them. I wanna get them out of here. It's disgusting, it's upsetting, depressing, and we just cannot deal with this. So I've been looking at lots of different ways. I wanna tell you guys a few ways that you can get out worms out of your tank if you don't wanna do this method, which some people think is kind of extreme. I personally feel like there is nothing too extreme to get these out of here, like we have to get them out. So one of the options that I've seen online when dealing with worms is a lot of people just said, make sure to keep your tank extremely, extremely clean. Don't overfeed because apparently overfeeding is one of the main reasons that these types of detritus worms flourish. Detritus meaning junk sitting on the bottom of your tank, like old food, algae, and things like that. You know, it's funny, I actually called my local fish store to inquire about these worms, what they were and everything, and they were like, well, they flourish whenever you overfeed your tank. So he was like, stop feeding your tank and they should die off on their own eventually, but they'll never fully be gone, basically is the idea that he said. And I was like, well, I can't really stop feeding this tank forever because number one, I'm cycling, so I have to feed it in order to cycle it. And then number two, not knowing that these worms are gonna be gone forever is really problematic. So that is why I did do some research on how we can kill them today. Oh my gosh, there's a bug. Why are there bugs? Why? Patrick? Crisis averted, okay. Oh, so I was looking up a lot of different options and again, the cleaning option would work over time, but you would never really get rid of them fully. But I did decide to do a massive water change the day that I found these in here. And the next day, directly after I did the massive gravel clean and a water change, my ammonia level shot up because I did manage to kill a lot of them. However, on day three, the ammonia level went back down. So I do think that that is a temporary fix and I really don't think that it's like a long-term solution to getting rid of the worms. If 
the worms bother you. A lot of people say the detritus worms aren't actually bad for your tank and that they won't hurt your fish. They're just disgusting and unsightly and they can really thrive if you have too much debris at the bottom of your tank. Like if you don't have a bottom feeder or you're cycling like me and I just hate them and I want them gone. So this is just my own personal decision. You are welcome to keep your worms if you love them. <laughs> the next option you can use to clean your tank is copper. However, I feel personally that copper is a very risky and also kind of an extreme measure. I personally hate copper and I stay away from copper in my tanks. I'm really, really paranoid about putting any chemicals or fish food or anything that has copper in it. A lot of things for fish tanks do have trace amounts of copper and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but dosing your tank with copper can be really risky and cause a lot of issues. There are a lot of different really sensitive fish like puffers and other things that are very, very sensitive to copper. Also, copper is very bad for crustaceans, shrimps, invertebrates, snails, and things like that. So again, that's gonna be up to you if you wanna use copper to kill your worms. Now, as you guys know, the only thing I have in this tank are pest snails and the worms, but in general, I don't have any fish, I don't have puffer fish or anything like that, and I also don't have shrimp, so technically, I could dose this with copper, but if I were ever wanting to get any sensitive fish, scaleless fish, or shrimp in the future, which I do want shrimp, then using copper in here is a really big risk, and it's not something that I'm willing to do. And then the final solution that I have found that I think is gonna work best for me in this tank is Panicure C. Panicure C is a dog dewormer. Now, I've seen a lot of people use different types of dog dewormers. There's also something called Safeguard, which you can use. However, use it at your own discretion. Also be very, very careful with your dosing. So this is Panicure C. I actually ordered this off of Amazon. I will leave a link in the description down below if you guys need some or if you're dealing with these worms and that's how you found this video. I am choosing to use this dog dewormer. Now I know you guys are probably like, it's a dog dewormer, what? Basically it kills worms, which is what we're dealing with here. This is actually powder in packets. So we are gonna be diluting down the powder in these packets in some water, dumping it in here, and then we will be taking care of these worms. Number one, this is obviously not most people's first choice method for doing this. A lot of aquarium hobbyists do use this to get rid of worms in their tanks. However, like I said, there are a lot, of, a lot of other options. Just be sure that you do the research and find which method is safest for your tank and its inhabitants. Everyone's tank is completely different, so just find what's gonna work best for you. I don't have anything super, super sensitive in my tank other than pest snails, so I'm not really scared about killing anything in my tank. I'm gonna use this and it's gonna be fine. Now, obviously, besides just worms, there are other things that this dewormer can kill in your tank, so I wanna talk about those really quick. If you have nearite snails, apple snails, or ram's horn snails, be sure to remove them out of your tank before dosing this, because this has been proven to kill those types of snails. However, not pest snails. Pest snails really can survive nuclear disasters, apparently, so this will not harm any pest snails, which is the snail that I have in my tank here. I have seen four ram's horn snails in my tank, and I did take them all out days ago when I sat up their little tank that's up there so I'm not worried about my ram's horns at all they're in their own tank as far as fish and shrimp goes this has been proven to be safe for them again pay attention to your doses use it at your own risk and also do your own research don't just take my opinion this is my first time ever doing this but I'm just telling you what my research has told me and also why I'm choosing to do this is because I don't have fish or shrimp in my tank so the risk is very minimal because Panicure even after it's been dosed in your tank Number one, if I wanted to deactivate it literally within hours, all I have to do is turn on my LED light and it renders this inactive. So basically whenever I dose this, I am gonna have to do a blackout on my tank and keep it completely dark so that I know that this is active and then I do have to let this work for 48 hours to make sure that I kill all of them. It's basically in order of how I'm gonna do it. The first thing we're gonna do before we put this in here is we are actually gonna lower this tank water by 50%, do a water change, and we're also gonna stir this gravel up really, really good with a vacuum and basically do a gravel vac. That is gonna shake these worms up. It's also gonna remove a lot of them and then we are gonna refill this tank back up with clean dechlorinated water. Like I said, I did do this four days ago, the first day that I saw them because I just couldn't sleep at night knowing there was worms in here. So I did do a massive water change, like 80%. And it did kill a lot of the worms because they do not like clean water and clean gravel. They can't thrive in that. So that did work, but again, that's a temporary fix. I still have tons of worms in here. Hence why we're doing this. The second thing we're gonna do is fill it back up with dechlorinated water. The third thing we're gonna do is remove the carbon cartridge out of the filter. Carbon pulls toxins and chemicals and different types of medicines and things out of your water. So if you've ever treated your tank for ick or for worms or anything like that, 
the carbon cartridge will actually pull the medicine out, render it ineffective, and then it won't be able to work in your tank. So we do have to make sure to pull out that carbon cartridge before we dose the tank. It's very important. Then we're gonna wait 48 hours with the light off and it covered with a blanket. It's really important to do a blackout with a medicine like this because light does render it inactive. After the 48 hours, I'm gonna take it off and assess the tank. If I see a ton of dead worms everywhere, fingers crossed that that happens, then we'll know that the medicine worked and then I can choose to either dose it again or we can go on and do a massive water change, refill it, and then move on with our lives. That is up to you completely, obviously. Just do what's best for your tank and do your research. I can't stress that enough. So as far as one of these packets goes, one packet is good for 100 gallons. So one tenth of a package of this powder diluted in water is perfect for a 10 gallon aquarium. Now you wanna make sure to do the dosage properly, especially if you have shrimp or fish in your tank. Again, if you have sensitive snails that are not pest snails or bladder snails, make sure you pull your snails out because it will kill them. However, I only have bladder snails. I'm not really worried, so I'm gonna eyeball my dosage, but I am gonna keep it as close as I can to one tenth of one of these packages and no more than that. Okay, I think that is all of the disclaimers that I have for this video. We are about to get started. I am so ready to do this. I already have my light off as you can see. I already unplugged it and everything because we're not gonna do that. I do need to take the carbon cartridge out first and then we will get to doing this water change, gravel vac, pray for me, I hate worms so much. Literally sticking my hand in here to pull out the little snails and put them in the snail tank physically made me ill. Just knowing I was putting my hands in worm water it's just a nightmare. I really hope this video helps you guys. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I have my bucket, my siphon. These are really the two only tools you're really gonna need to do this. And we are about to get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that carbon cartridge out of here because I know I will forget to do that. All right, I got it out. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna start siphoning the water and we're also gonna do the gravel back. Now I am gonna be leaving my plants in here for the dosage and I'm hoping that it doesn't kill them. Everything I read said that it's safe, but again, you never really know till you do it, but I'm not worried about it. They're infested anyway, so. Now by doing this, I'm gonna basically stir up the worm, so I'll probably see a lot more of them. All right, so we're gonna fill it back up. We just have to dechlorinate this water. I'm gonna use my Seachem Prime and we're gonna fill it up to the first line in here for five gallons. We will turn the filter back on after we do dose this because we do want that filter to be running so it'll suck up all the dead worms. Hopefully, this is what one pack looks like. Like I said, this is enough for, I think, a 100 gallon tank because you use one tenth of the package per 10 gallons. So it would work for a 100 gallon tank. Um, this is a one gram packet and you wanna use 0.1 gram per 10 gallons. I would say that's about a 10. I'm just trying to kill worms, but we are gonna mix this really, really good. All right, we're gonna dump this in. We're gonna put the top back on, cover it up, and then we are gonna be done. All right, I have it covered. Yes, this is an old panda blanket, it's fine. But it's covered, the lights are off, the filter's running, and the heater is on, and then I will come back and check it in two days. So today is day three after I dosed the tank to kill all of the detritus or planaria worms or whatever kind of worms that I noticed that were in here about five days ago. Unfortunately, killing them has proven to be really hard. So today I am doing my last and final step, hopefully that will kill these worms and then I won't see any more. The Panicure for sure did kill a ton of the worms. I saw hundreds in here about three days ago and then I dosed it it, did that massive water change and now I've only seen two or three small ones kind of floating through the water but today we are going to be doing I guess technically the last water change I did decide to add more dewormer yesterday morning so it's been another 24 hours since I did add a second dose of dewormer I mentioned I was going to do that I did we're also going to be adding a tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide in here this is just an additional step that I'm taking I don't have any fish or shrimp or anything in this tank so I'm not worried so for me to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide just to kill the last of the worms it's not a big deal obviously you want to be very careful with dosing if you do go this method to kill worms because you don't want to kill fish you don't want to kill anything in here that you want to keep and also if you overdose it it can kill your plants so I'm gonna be doing about one tablespoon maybe a little bit less for a 10 gallon tank and then I am gonna let it sit and then we will do a really big water change that will hopefully kill the last of these worms I am so hopeful 
this entire journey has just been so stressful <laughs> like so stressful but we're getting there i told you guys from day one this tank was always meant to be a trial and error tank i knew that it was either going to crash or it was going to thrive and oh my goodness did i not realize how true those words were when i said that but i am really grateful that i've done this I really do love fish tanks and I don't think it's gonna end here I'm still gonna be pushing forward and I am learning more all the time we're not giving up we're gonna keep going and we are gonna get on with this water change all right we are at the end of the worm journey this is the last day we're gonna be working on killing these detritus worms and then we will be monitoring the tank after that to make sure that they are all gone my last step after the dewormer that's been sitting in here for a few days is gonna be this hydrogen peroxide water solution. There's one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide in here and then some dechlorinated water. We do have to let this sit. I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes and then check the tank and then if I need a little bit longer, I will. Obviously paying very close attention to the plants and obviously if I see the worms not dying, well, we'll let it sit for a little bit longer. All right, now we'll let it sit and then we'll do the water change. All right, the tank is completely emptied. I gravel backed the heck out of it. As you can see, I actually got my lotus out just so I wouldn't destroy it because this is my favorite plant. Um, but we are gonna be refilling it back up now and then we are gonna be dechlorinating it and setting it back up and then hopefully there's no worms. <laughs> so I have two carbon filters in here. I'm gonna just use one of them. I gave it a good rinse. I put it in the filter media and now we are gonna be placing this back in the aqua clear. All right guys, so here is my tank. It's been about four hours since I did the water change and the peroxide dip and everything. So far so good. I don't see anything in here. I don't see any little bugs. I don't see worms. I also don't see any snails. Although I haven't really seen any snails since I took all of my snails out and put them in their tank. I did pluck them as I saw them since I set up my snail tank, which is actually doing really well. My snails are thriving. However, I don't see any snails at all in this tank. I haven't seen one in a few days. The dewormer obviously wasn't supposed to kill any snails. I haven't seen any snail shells or anything like that. I also don't see any worms, so fingers crossed that it worked. I cannot tell you guys how happy I am. The tank looks really, really good right now. It's a tiny bit cloudy, but nothing crazy. My lotus and my banana plant, they're doing really good. I have that lotus right there that's also really pretty. But yeah, overall, everything seems to be fine. I think the tank is cleaned of everything, but we will see. I'm gonna be testing the water again. We will be monitoring the levels, but that is pretty much it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video with me. I really appreciate it. This has definitely been a wild ride. This video is probably all over the place, but it's basically just been me trying to kill worms for a week. <laughs> But I hope it was helpful to someone out there. I really hope that this video helped someone. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys are interested in watching all of my future videos as well as other tank videos, feel free to subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys next time. Be kind.